Assalamu alaikum. This is me, Tazmin Tayyiba Tanisha, and today is another interview session with the greatest and the one and only Mr. Hasnat Azan, sir. So, sir, how are you doing? Uh, I'm doing really great and so excited to face the interview uh, conducted by you, especially. So, I uh, hope this session will be interesting. The viewers will be enjoying our session. So, yeah. All right. Okay, so my questions to you will be English related. So are you ready for that? Uh, always. Okay, so my first question is, why is English important and why? I mean, like, if it is important, then why do people need it? And why do we need to be fluent in it? So the thing is, see, at this point, mm -hmm. everywhere you need English. You need to speak English in job interview, in your school, there is English subject, even the most important thing. If you want to go abroad, the most important, mm -hmm. everyone has a dream to go abroad. You also need yeah. English. Now, you may say that, yeah, I'll go abroad as a waiter of a restaurant. Even at that case, you need English because you need to communicate with the people there, right? Mm -hmm. So how will you communicate? You need a language and that's English, so there is no way. So, and you know it really well, um, as you are done with so many interviews and recently you have completed the Google courses as well as the meta courses. So mm -hmm. there you will see the complex English structure, which is really not easy to understand yeah. for grade six to seven. It's for the professionals. So mm. if you could not speak English, if you don't know how to speak, if you don't understand the English, you'll never be able to achieve these certificates. Yeah, that's why I think we need English and English is important. All right, okay, that was a great answer. And then my next question is that, you know, there are four skills in English, right? Which is listening, speaking, reading and writing. So why is like speaking important? Like, do we need to follow the perfect British or American accent or we can just follow any accent in English? Um, that's a very good question. Uh, and I would love to answer this question because uh, personally, I like British accent a lot mm -hmm. uh, because of so many reasons. Um, the first reason it's posh. Uh, it may hurt you as you follow the American one. So the first reason uh, it's posh. The accent is very posh and it sounds cool and very rich accent. Mm -hmm. And you see most of the people, they follow this accent uh, in Britain. So for these things, I love this accent a lot. And I think it's the best. But that's my personal opinion. Um, others, they can even go for American one. But uh, the thing is, British and American, they are the core accents. Mm -hmm. uh, and if I talk about other accents, uh, I think they are not important to know because these two are standard yeah. in this time. So, yeah. Okay. All right. That was a great answer. And then my next question is that, um, can you tell the difference between the American and British accent, like the major differences? So the major difference, um, mm -hmm. if I say, um, right now I'm not following the British one. Um, as you know that I have to conduct many sessions, so sometimes it might be tougher for my students to understand my accent. So some, that's why I go for the American one, which is mm -hmm. easier to understand. So now the thing is, um, in British accent, you see, that people, they do not pronounce the rock sound. So as you have watched so many movies and listened to so many English songs, you know it better that the difference between British and American. So if I say the first point, in British accent, we do not pronounce the rock sound or the R letter. Mm -hmm. Instead, we just silent it or we remove it from the word. Uh, that's how we pronounce. For example, F-A-R-M. 
So the pronunciation in um, British accent would be farm, and in American accent it would be far. So you see the difference. I'm not pronouncing the r. Uh, so there are so many examples. If I say one more, um, the thing which you follow the most. Um, if I say a word, water, right? That's mm -hmm. the normal pronunciation. Yeah. Not British, not. American. Mm -hmm. uh, so let me pronounce the British one. Mm -hmm. That's water. Mm -hmm. Right. So you see, I'm strongly and harshly pronouncing this water. Mm -hmm. And I'm also not pronouncing the ra. As I mentioned before, they do yes. not pronounce ra. Yep. But here, I'm giving a stress on ta. But in American, it's the opposite. I mean, they are always the opposite, you know? So they would not say, um, water, they would pronounce it like water. water. So you see the difference? They're pronouncing it like water. So that's the difference. They just change the ta sound into the dust sound. And that's how the American people pronounce. Right. So these are some examples. And if I explain the whole thing, I need to take a class of yours. So, okay. um, that's going to be a class for two hours, and you have to join my class for that. All right. So, yeah. Okay. That's the difference. All right. Okay. So, then my last question to you would be that, um, you know, that people face a lot of difficulties in learning English. So, how can we improve our English speaking skills? So, here, the thing which I always mention uh, in in every session where I go, that there are four skills. The first one, listening. The second one, speaking. The third one, reading. And the fourth one, writing. So here, what you need to do, if you want to improve your speaking, you need to improve your listening first. Mm -hmm. This is like a structure, and you cannot actually break it. You have to follow this structure. Mm -hmm. If you want to improve your speaking, you need to improve your listening first. Mm -hmm. And if you want to improve your writing, you need to improve your reading. Mm -hmm. Now, let me give you an example. Um, you know Hindi, right? Yeah. A little bit. A little bit, a little bit. Um, do you watch Hindi movie? Yes. Do you listen to Hindi songs? Yes. Okay, fine. All right, now... If I ask you, can you speak Korean? No, I cannot. You have to, no way. I have to? How? If you cannot, if you cannot, that's a very nice bicycle. <laughs> if you cannot, you need to pay uh, 2,000 ticket to me. 2,000? Yeah, 2,000, no way. Well, I cannot. You cannot? No, I okay, cannot. So, uh, anyways, forget. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, um, you, you cannot speak Korean, right? No. Did you watch any Korean movie or listen to any Korean songs before? No. No. So you see, she didn't listen to any Korean song or any Korean movie. That's why she cannot speak Korean. So that's what I want to say, that if you don't listen to a language, you'll never be able to speak that language. So if you want to improve your speaking, you need to improve your listening first. Okay, so did you understand this? The yes. relation between um, listening and speaking. Mm -hmm. It's like the computer and the mouse. Yeah. Exactly, right? If you do not click, the application on the computer will not be opened. Right. Yep. So now let's move on on the next two skills, which are reading and writing. Yep. So... You have to write. This time it's not possible for you to write uh, as you're holding the microphone. So um, you just tell me a few words about, let's say LLM. Let's see, can you say or LLM. not? Oh, LLM. What's the meaning of LLM, by the way? So I asked you the question. You are, I mean, I actually have no clue what LLM asking me the same question. Yeah. Um, okay. So you don't know the meaning of LLM. I do. Why? Not. Why so you don't clueless. know? Uh, because I don't know. Uh, because you don't know. 
Yeah. So why am I asking you the question? That's the I very do big not question. Know. So the thing is, okay, you don't know about LLM. Now let's no. her ask a question. It's about Tesol Bangladesh. Mm -hmm. Can you tell about Tesol Bangladesh? Yeah, I can. Yeah, please. Well, Tesol Bangladesh is an English um, learning platform and it is the best English learning platform all over Asia and maybe all around the world as well. And yeah, it is very, very important. And I would say Tesol Bangladesh is one of the best places ever. Just a few words, you know. Uh, just a few words. Yeah, I yeah. see. So you see everyone that she can speak about Tesol Bangladesh, but she cannot speak about LLM. Now, the reason is why? Because she has read a lot about Tesol Bangladesh. She attended classes, she watched online videos, and she can write about Tesol. But when it comes about LLM, she cannot because she hasn't read any article before about LLM. So that's the thing. If you do not read, you'll never be able to write. You need to keep this thing in mind. So here we can say that listening is your input and speaking is your output. Reading is your input and writing is your output. So that's what is the relation between these four skills. All right, okay. Now, you know, we're supposed to end the interview session, right? But I have a tricky question for you. Mm, tricky question. Yeah, a tricky question. Are you ready for it? This word is very, I mean, uh, weird. Uh, anyways. Yeah, it's uh, very dangerous. I'd also try to give a tricky answer of this tricky question. Let's okay. see. Okay. So we know that you're an international ESL trainer at Social Bangladesh, right? Yes. Okay. So you have taught many students. Uh, of course. Okay. Many kids, many adults, right? Yeah, everyone. <laughs> everyone. Okay. Like all age groups. So who is your ultimate favorite student? <laughs> That's a very difficult question. And I guess right now I'm in danger. This is the danger zone. It is the danger zone. And I guess I should leave the interview, but there is no way. No. So uh, what do I think? I had so many good t students. So in my life, I had so many good students and so many bad students. Here, bad, I want to mean that weak. Mm -hmm. Their performance were not good. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that I will dislike them. I'm never going to like them. So from my point of view, everyone is my favorite. Um, it's not about the performance, like you're doing great, so you're my favorite. Not anything like that. Uh, a student who is not good, not a, doing a very good performance, he or she is also my favorite. Because this is how we need to engage them with us. And in future, they will be like us. So this is the thing what I believe. So, yeah. All right. Okay. I was not expecting that. I was hoping that you would say a name. But okay. Well, yeah. Let's end this interview session right here. So uh, hope and right now she we, has uh, not any tricky question. I can understand. I do not have uh, any tricky questions. You cannot put me in danger anymore. No problem. Next time. Next uh, time. Next time, please get prepared to actually put me in trouble. I will. I will. I will definitely get prepared. Okay. So yeah, for today, we're going to end this interview session right here. Hope you all enjoyed. And yeah, Allah Hafiz. Assalamualaikum. Assalamualaikum, everyone.